morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be. And I welcome you to the Nancy Ferrari Show, where I introduce you to my featured guests who share their expertise and life experiences. And together we share what's real, relevant, and relatable to you. I am Nancy, excuse me, I am Nancy Ferrari, your host, and I am so so very excited to share my special guest with you as this is her second guest appearance with uh, with me and even more enlightened I I was just sharing with her I I reread her book and this is a must-have book and you'll know after you hear uh, our conversation about it why and I just I just adore her and and I'm going to now proceed with who she is. With me today is Diane Bischoff James, who is a best selling author of one of my favorite books, The Real Brass Ring Change Your Life Course Now. She's also a speaker and a life reboot coach who educates clients in the latest techniques for manifesting and transforming their hearts minds and bodies for optimal authentic living having found herself completely off track she lost 60 pounds left a highly successful but exhausting executive corporate career rid herself of depression conquered debilitating health problems pursued her passion as an actress navigated a healthy divorce and survived the perils of an addictive relationship and co-created a new one vital and real all after 40 Wow, what an example Diane is for us. And I want to share The Real Brass Ring has been featured in uh, Alm Times Magazine and voted an Aspire Magazine Top 10 Inspirational Book. And I am just so thrilled that she is here with us on my show because I know she's done a lot of media and needless to say, we have much to talk about. And I warmly welcome Diane Bischoff-James to my show. Good morning or good afternoon to you. (laughs) Well, it's still morning, so good morning to you and uh, afternoon and evening to everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Nancy. I'm so happy to be here. Truly my pleasure. You you know how full my heart is and and I really feel that we've been divinely connected um, once again and uh, always love having you on. And and, uh, as I shared, uh, there's so much value in rereading a book. You know, when, when I first, uh, over a year ago, had you on my show and had read it, I was reading, reading it probably through diff- a different lens. <clears throat> but this time there was, there was more that was like popping out to me. You're such a gifted writer as well. And um, very, very entertaining in, in spite of some of your, your <laughs> hardships that I just shared. Um, so, so share with me, and we're not going to go into you know all aspects of the book because we don't want to take the the element away of people who are going to buy the book. But it was that one moment that, and, and she actually has written, she wrote an endorsement for you, uh, Sonia. And it, it, am I correct? Yes, yes, she did. Mm-hmm. Yes, and and it was through what she told you that that really puts you on the the right track but sometimes that doesn't they, they say transformation can happen in an instant however there's 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 work that goes along with that correct yes i call it my uh my outing my psychic outing <laughs> <That> she, <laughs> in in one hour of time um i was 38 and uh, just had been very synchronistically guided to her. A couple of people said in one week, you got to go see this woman, and she was in Chicago. It was Sonia Choquette, and this is long before she had written as many books as she has right now. She has well over 10, 12 books out. And she was seeing people in her home, and so I thought, you know, what a cool birthday present. And I thought, I'll just do that for myself. I've, I've always been interested in, you know, in metaphysics and that type of work but I had never really focused on it very much so I just went to see her kind of on a lark and uh, thought that I would just go sit and see what she had to say and you know I'd had all the American dream lined up everything was like moving perfectly you know big house crossing the lake I had the the cute red convertible I had the you know the designer shoes and the designer bag and I was pursuing the business because I thought that's what you're supposed to do get 
lots of money and, you know, make sure you're helicopter parenting all the time and make sure you never let any ball drop and don't let them see you sweat. And so I was doing all that stuff and I went to see her and I really thought she was going to give me like these two thumbs up, you know, the psychic Mm -hmm. thumbs up, like you go girl, keep going. And um, instead for an hour, she literally, I felt like she undressed me, like she took every layer of false falsehood pretense everything was just stripped off and then she kind of beat beat the pulp out of me too so I sat there for an hour and she said everything about your life is wrong she's like wrong wrong man (laughs) wrong guy wrong career wrong passion area Um, she didn't have you know she was too polite to tell me also the body I was like 190 pounds at the time so I was clearly grossly overweight and she said you have gone up a ladder you climbed up the wrong ladder and you got to the top and now you're looking over and I'm telling you, you're on the wrong ladder. The one over there is the one you're supposed to be on. And she said, you better hurry up and grab at the real brass ring or it's going to be too late for you. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of like went into like immediate, like PSTD. <laughs> I was kind of frozen. Well, I didn't yeah. know what to do. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like you're almost 40 and someone's like, you completely screwed everything up, everything. And I'm like, did I really mess everything up? Is there anything in my life that's right? And she yeah, can you tell pretty me much something like right. <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> and so she's like, you better grab that brass ring, which became the title of the book, because I'm like, did it come by and I didn't see it? Did I was I like blind? Where 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 is this ring that you're talking about? What is it? And so. I was just kind of like frozen in time. I felt like, you know, someone took the rug, pulled it all out. And then she's like, you're supposed to be an actor, an author, a teacher, and a healer. And she said, that's where your path is. And you're supposed to find your heart. And she goes, but you don't even have a heart. I'm like, oh, great. On top of everything else, I don't have a heart. (laughs) So, I mean, there was no mincing of words. (laughs) Let me put it to you that way. And I'm like, she stripped you down to your soul. Happy birthday. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And what did I invest in? <laughs> yeah, and it was not cheap. And so I just, I, I really didn't know what to do. I felt like crying right there. Instead, I kind of pulled, I kept myself together. And I just said, well, you know, what happens if I, the only question I really asked that was of any significance in the whole time I was there, I said, well, okay, let me just ask you one thing. What happens if I don't do what you're talking about? All these things, you know, find my heart, change relationships, change careers, start this thing. I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, I don't even know what this healer teacher thing is. And she said, you know, you're going to have to, unfortunately, she goes, you're going to have to come back and do it all over again. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, next lifetime. She goes, you're going to pass. It's going to be like, this was a waste and you're going to have to start over. And the only thing I heard inside my head was, oh, heck no. (laughs) Oh, no way. I'm not doing that. There is no way I'm going to, if this is the message and this is my wake up call, then something inside said, there is no way in God's green earth that I'm going to come back and have messed this one up and not at least given it a good college try. So that was my wake-up call. You know, it was, a, it was a shocker. I got, you know, smacked around pretty good. And then she also told me that I was, um, call, you know, I was clinically and chronically depressed, which was true, but I hadn't told anybody else that. And so, you know, I was sucking down Prozac because when you have that kind of lifestyle it doesn't mean you're happy it may look good that's all the that's all the 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 smoke in the mirrors that looks pretty good but on the inside it was absolutely miserable so in a way it was kind of this was the upside i felt like someone did read my soul and i felt like they finally said look you're sad and depressed kid you're you're miserable you're you're sucking down food to make yourself feel better for a second and then you're taking those little white pills to shove everything else down to the bottom of your feet so you don't feel anything. And that part was all true. So in a weird way, it was a little cathartic and then I finally felt like I could be real for one moment in time and say, yeah, you're right, everything about my life is wrong. And so um, I had to pull the pieces back together. I mean, it was 12 years in the making, but I finally figured out what she was talking about. (laughs) So that's the good part. And I became an actor. all kinds of crazy stories about how that happened. That, was, that wasn't super easy. It was awful fun going through the process, but now I've had the chance to... Um, I'm in a movie with uh, Paul Servino that will be coming out in March, I believe, of this year called Precious Metal, and that's going to really? be hitting... Yeah, it's going to be... I'm so excited. It's going to be hitting um, 
all theaters all over the country, and um, it's this, just a fabulous tale. And I I play this kind of crazy, um, kind of like a lab rat. I'm kind of like the Dexter, but I don't kill people. I just kind of like do the investigative work. And so that that's really fun. So I got to make the acting part real, and now I've been able to tour the country and, and to write this book and just to let everybody know that, you know, many of us are off track in many different ways, but there are ways to put yourself back into your A game and to play it out and to find this incredible life richness. So I've had the chance to kind of tour all over the country and offer workshops to help people break through and discover the real, the real you, the re- who you really are, and to live that way. So I'm very fortunate that I had that little encounter because it really is all. In the, 12 years later, it all came, everything she said um, has manifested itself in a really beautiful way. So I'm very, very, very lucky. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's why I, I think the distinction, your, your, um, my mind is kind of, uh, or the, the, my antennas are going up on that, that there's people that will, you know, have, have their life and they think they're perfectly fine uh, and then be told that. But then there's others who, who know that things are not, not good uh, and they're seeking and they're searching, but they don't know how to get, Get get back on the track, as I call to to live their soul's destiny. What you, we were really intended to live, and that's why there is always a gift in wherever your intuition leads you. Correct, uh, and and you started doing what I did a few years ago because I heard it from somewhere I don't know who, and I it works every time because when I'm driving to. The, the market or the mall or whatever and I say in my mind uh, I, I, I set the intention that there will be a parking spot right in the front for me and lo and behold now why that didn't work with the, the, the Powerball last month I don't know but maybe it wasn't supposed to be but it's amazing when you start to for me it's about being very intentional on what I set out to the universe that I want to manifest. And that's what you talk a lot about. Absolutely, absolutely. The the nice part about that, I, you know, I, I look at it kind of like this laboratory and we're in this lab and we get to experiment with our own powers and using that and then with the powers of the universe. So I put, it, I put all of this pretty much together in this first book about the 14 shortcuts for happy living. Right. And... The bottom line is, and this is what I'm talking about really at length in the second book that I'm working on right now, is as within, so without. And it touches on what you just mentioned, Nancy, because we have all the gifts. We have all of this beauty. We have wholeness and completeness from within. And we have all of this content, all this information is within. We were just born and kind of that memory was stripped away. So it's about how to reawaken the inside of us. And that's what's so fun about the law of attraction and and practicing manifestation is once we have that confidence that the the parking spot's going to be there, Mm -hmm. it is there. Mm -hmm. And this happens all the time. If we believe that you're unlucky with parking... (laughs) or with the Powerball, (laughs) then you probably are. And if you believe and know that you have tremendous confidence that the rock star parking is right there, then it shows up. And that, and it, it, for me, it started all experimenting with parking and candy and food and stuff like that. I started to see what I could attract to myself. And now it's really fun is that if you become pretty masterful at it and very confident, amazing things, absolutely amazing things, phone calls that, you could never imagine, you know, someone just saying, wow, I, I, I've had so many beautiful synchronistic things happen this year that it, it's just, you know, just one example is, uh, you know, I've just had literally I'll be saying, you know, I, I haven't done any film work for a while because I've been so busy touring. Then all of a sudden I'll, I'll be doing the, well, you know, I feel, I feel bad for myself and I'm not, what's the matter? And then all of a sudden I'm like, no, why don't I just see what I can do? Let's see, let's play the game. And I play the show me game. And I'll say, okay, universe, this team, this council that I have, I said, show me 
two things. Show me that the work that I'm doing is, is, is helpful, it's valuable, that you know, people are getting something out of it. Just remind me that this is going the right way. And then, and then I'd kind of like to do some of the, the fun, playful stuff, which is the acting work. And every time I do that, and then I let go. I don't try to hold on to it. And I swear, I swear, mm-hmm. Nancy, once a week, once a week now, something is coming in that I could never have anticipated. I did not set it in place. It just kind of comes towards me. And I'll get like this, a note. Someone says, I just want to let you know, I saw you a year ago and I want to let you know, I feel lighter and brighter. My life is, is so much happier. I understand now that, you know, I have, I have tremendous power and I'm starting to use it. And I'll just get this beautiful email from somebody that just comes out of nowhere. And I write back, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you know, just a reminder that, that this is the right path. And then, you know, all of a sudden I get the, uh, you know, this a beautiful clip in the mail. Here's a copy of this film. I just got a film um, that I had never seen, and I, I get murdered. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but it's really fun. <laughs> and, you know, I'm this old-time nurse with the old-time little flipped-up hat. And this doctor comes in, and he literally, you know, kind of like stabs me in the neck and whatever. And it, it sounds terrible, but I was terrified that maybe I just didn't play it too right or I was overdone. And I actually got the clip recently, and I'm thinking, wow, that wasn't bad. I died pretty well, you know. <laughs> I died pretty authentically. <laughs> and so, so it's that kind of fun stuff where my brain sometimes is working on the, oh, I don't know if I did that right, or I hope that this is working, and I, I still am building, a, you know, traction and confidence in, in all the work that I'm doing. And it's so nice when the show me shows up. And so I've really started to use both sides, and this is the part of the, um, one of the principles that I, I kind of made up in my own branch of science called pragmatic metaphysics because mm. I love to tie in the West, mm-hmm. this whole Western part of, Give me a plan, execute your plan, walk your talk, you know, your investment, your physical investment into what it is that you're trying to get is the whole Western side of life. And then there's the whole Eastern side, which is about the trust. And it's about, you know, working towards your own ascension. And it's about, you know, just love. And it's about pure love and and pure, pure authenticity. And what I like to do is kind of sew them up together so I can help as many people as possible put the East and the West in one little package because um, I think we don't get that. We don't, we don't all win the lottery. Because <laughs> Maybe I'm not meant to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There again, we can, right. You know, right. Hope right. And wish and, but there's, there's, there's a grander plan. Um, and, mm-hmm. uh, and perhaps that could create more uh, issues. And in, in fact, there's been conversations about that to have that enormous amount of money, how life would shift and, and, you know, I've seen the word fear within my notes with you. Uh, and that's what people will put in, will instill into their life. Oh my gosh, I've got so much money. Now I've got to protect myself. I, I, I'm, you know, out there to the world and everybody will be wanting to to take some of that money, it, it can create <laughs> more problems right. than than without it. So, um, and that's I, you and I truly are alike. Because I, I I would have never used the put those two words pragmat, pragmatic metaphys, metaphysics because I used to just call myself a safe spiritualist in the sense that I have always combined both. Um, I'm not on totally on one side of the pendulum that there's that that logistic side the, real, the realistic the the logistic side of our reality but yet the ability like i'm looking at my notes here to see the unseen to know mm-hmm. that that knowing and that power of the intuition and trusting in that right and the and the beauty is and here's here's the funny un, like i think kind of like the underbelly and this is what i've been kind of practicing with and learning more about if if we all had you know sometimes oh, wouldn't it be nice if somebody dropped a bag off in my front door with at least 3 mil you know and just left it there and the the funny part is yes i could wish for that every day and i maybe we all have and and the bag doesn't show up i don't know many people that get that bag of money you know <laughs> and and I, I was kind of asking myself, why, why is that? Why, if I'm such a great manifester, why is it? Why, why can't we all just say, poof, you know, poof? I want the new car, and the new car just drives itself up your driveway. Well, I think that there's an earning component in that, and this is what I've noticed about myself. I look at, um, and I've been able to help people kind of ask yourself honestly, 
would you feel like that was right? I mean, there's something about being here on this earth that has an earning aspect to it. And Mm -hmm. if something just shows up without me doing my part, I don't know how much I buy into that, truthfully. Truthfully. I think part of it is, and I like to ask this to um, a lot of the clients come to see me because I've had the chance to tour at quite a few of the expos. I'm going to be at Conscious Life coming up this weekend. I'm so excited. But one thing I get to do is to talk to people there, and I put them on this kind of a diagnostic. And I, I always ask them, how much are you in the game of what it is you want to achieve? And it's a great question because I would say everybody answers very honestly, and they'll say, yeah, I'm 60%. Oh, okay, so you're 60% in wanting to get a new job. So in the game, you know, your, your, your desire to get a new job is 100, but you're into the game at like 50, 60%. Okay, so what's happened? I don't have a new job. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> because, where, where's you know, the other 40%? Yeah, where's, where's the, the other 40? Well, watching TV, talking about what you don't like, spending a whole lot of time, you know, maybe overworking the job that you don't love. And so I think we all have that kind of um, essential truth where we know when we're invested. And, and our investment is probably, I'm going to say, what I've noticed is like 90% of my game. If I'm invested, gosh darn it, it seems to come true. But when I'm not totally invested or I'm monkeying around at 20%, although I've put the desire out there at 100, no, it doesn't. It really does not happen for at least what I've observed. It doesn't happen for me very well. So, so I, I think when one nice little tidbit that a lot of people can take is really ask yourself for the things that you want that are going to really make you happy. Ask yourself, what is your desire? And then how much are you invested in that game? And then look at what it would take to move that investment up. Because we all know the answer. It means, oh, wow, I had to make phone calls. I have to put my resume out. I have to go actually have interviews. I have to go to the career fairs. I have to show up. And so the nice thing is, you know, we, we all are in earnest, I think, you know, and, and truthful with ourselves when we really ask those kind of questions. So I like to kind of, and that's kind of the practical part. That's the pragmatic part. And um, there's this lovely diagnostic I'm able to do where I put people on it for mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. And that's really your alignment. Mm-hmm. And part of the shortcuts for happy living, living talk about that where the, the alignment is being in truth with yourself and integrity and physical let's just talk about that you know i know i've had um my share my share of physical issues mm-hmm. i know and as you've probably shared um, you know in, in your past you too have struggled with a few physical issues too i think we all have especially as we age but it was just shared with me like we lose like a quarter pound of muscle mass a year as we get oh. older and i'm thinking you know have you ever noticed people could maybe stay the same weight but they look much more frail and they look kind of thinner and, um, you know, if yes. I, I hate to say it. I'd love to say we're not aging, but I think we might be, you know, we still might be aging a little bit. So I really took, I took very, I took it very seriously when I started realizing I'm, I'm losing muscle mass. That motivated me like, oh, oh, heck no, I'm not going to lose anymore. So started making the investment and that, you know, everyone can decide for themselves what that is, but at least 20 minutes twice a week with gross motor activity and then some strengthening. And you feel so much better. And you'll, I think the important part is um, feeling like you're in integrity with yourself. Your mm-hmm. body needs your time and attention. And um, whether it be yoga or whether it be um, qigong or whatever you want to do where you can start to really feel your own energy and feel your strength coming back. And it's, it's just really cool to put a month in and then look at the results and, and notice your feeling, notice that you're developing those muscles and that – I don't know, quite, quite frankly, the clothes then all of a sudden start to feel a little bit better. So, you know, they start... mm-hmm. there's, a, there's amazing things that, that happen when you make an investment on those four planes, the, I call it the quintessence, and you really look at how that could be balanced out and completely pulled together and sewn into a nice little kit. And so, so that's some of, the, mm-hmm. some of the fun work you can do. <laughs> you are just always this... this... I, I, I'm feeling like the lotus flower in, in front of my 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 eye, or my third eye right now. Just every time I talk to you, you've got it, it's 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 simple and it's um and what we can apply, but there's so much depth to it. Um, 
like for instance, what came to mind was when I was going through physical therapy a couple of years ago and it just did not seem like this knee was going to unlock. And it, you know, I, I was in a lot of pain and, uh, after surgery and I told my physical therapist, will this knee ever be normal again? And she said, what we need, to, what we're doing right now is activating your brain with your muscles and what we're doing here. And that went, I, I that was a, an awakening for me and how I took that also to my work to help others activate their senses because we go, we, we go sleepy. We go, we're dormant. Sometimes we don't know where, how we got from A to A to B and let's pay attention to, to what shows up. And so everything is a lesson. Sometimes you look at them and go, really, do I need to go through this? Um, you know, what am I, what am I missing out on? And that's a, a, a biggie, especially when you're in business for yourself, but there's, there's lessons to be learned. And that's what I always receive from you. Uh, when I, um, read your, 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 all your material that you put out. And I went into your, your, uh, website, um, I love your live your everything um, <laughs> because that's what we're supposed to do. We are we are right. living here, and that involves all the all the aspects of who we are. But if you you have um, I'm looking at my notes here, um, and actually this kind of falls into alignment to ask you to what psychological mechanism do you attribute your blindness? to your lack of authenticity and state of unhappiness before your fateful visit to Sonia. So we were on, you were probably on autopilot. You were doing what you Absolutely. should be doing. And this goes back to our quote unquote programming. Uh, and we all can relate to that. We're, you know, this is what you do. It's, it's universal. To to that, it's universal. Right? Mm-hmm. You can't get away from it. No. And this is the part that I hope, and, and this is my, I think it's going to be the most exciting thing for the future. Um, and I am, I, 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 Nancy, I had an awakening actually in the past um, year or so touring all over the country and talking to people and everybody has the same challenge. We are running off these subconscious programs. We have told ourselves at some point in our life, either I can't have something, I don't deserve it, I'm not good enough, or you know, some kind of shame and blame from the past is driving our present and our future. And so I'm, I've been working very hard. I, I actually came home one day, I was uh, having all these wonderful discussions with people in, in these expos and at all these events and in these workshops. And I actually came home, and I'll, I'll tell you, I haven't shared this with anybody, I, I said to my daughter, I said, I have these people tell me these amazing stories of where they're at and where they want to go, and, and people are, are so desiring to have happy, rich lives. Mm-hmm. And um, then I hear about these horrible things that happen to them in some cases, or they're stuck, or they feel like they can't move forward. And my daughter looks at me, and she goes, Mom, you have to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I look at her like, um, I have to fix ev- the world? And she goes, yes. She goes, it's your job. And I looked at her, and then she kind of walks away. And I'm like, what? wait a minute. And so, so I took it very seriously. I took this very seriously. And I'm like, you know what? She's right. She's right. I want to be able to find some techniques and tools that will help people resolve. And that's the word that I'm going to kind of focus on for the future book. We're going to resolve these things. What if you could go back and say, you know that time? I mean, I've had private clients. I do coaching. And, and, and one said, you know, I... I've had all this money and this success. I'm not happy. What I really want to do is create an artistic career. And he had all these dreams and desires behind it. And I said, why can't you? And he said, because I'm not good enough. I'm like, that's exactly right. That's why you don't have it right now. So let's go get that. And so we started using this new technique. It's kind of like a combination of four or five different methods I've been able to study. It's a combination of tapping, combination of kind of a gestalt, kind of a combination of some of the, the tremendous forgiveness work people are doing. And we mm-hmm. did it. And we get, go back to this case. And this, this young man had a situation at the dinner table with his dad. And his dad said something horrible. And, and they had this little, you know, like, kind of like an altercation. And, and he was five years old and he was stuck he was stuck at being five because we all are we all had some issues some things happened that weren't perfect nobody's to blame it just happened and we 
got that message stuck. And um, we went in, we got it, we got rid of it. And uh, this client is staring at me, his eyes are like saucers. And he's looking at me, he said, what did you just do to me? <laughs> it's like, I got rid of what stopped your, what's, I got rid of one of your blocks. And he's like, oh my goodness. And his eyes were kind of dilated and he started smiling. He said, I think I can do this now. I'm like, yes, you can. So, so part of the things that will be helpful for all of us is to realize we're running off these subconscious programs. These subconscious programs can be changed. And if we weren't stuck in the shame and blame and, and this, uh, you know, the guilt and whatever else, what other crazy messages are stuck inside, it would be such a beautiful palette. You know, I'd like one of these, please, and I'd like some of those, please, and I'm going to go after that career, and I'm going to get fit, and I'm going to meet a wonderful soulmate, and I'm going to go out and play at least once a week, so I'm doing things I love. And though, that's the world I want to live in. You know, and so, oh, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that all these methods and these tools um, will be there for all of us. And a really simple one, just for anyone who wants to just get started, is to look, just, just go on, even on, on YouTube and look up EFT, you know, Emotional Freedom Technique. It's an amazing, an amazing tool just to start at looking at what subconscious messages are running us and, and how many times, just a, a, a really simple one, you know, how, just say, I feel like I can have a lot of money and just go inside and see what messages come back to that. And very often, a lot of us have, oh, no, that's really scary, or I don't think I'm going to get that, or I will never be successful. And how many times those programs are running, this, are running, the, I say running, the, running the truck down the street. And I, I don't want that. I don't want that girl running. My, I don't want my eight-year-old driving the truck, you know, because <laughs> she's going to go off the road and go crazy and, and go running across people's yards and hit people. And so I don't, I don't want her running the show anymore. I would like the, the confident adult running the show. And, and it, you can, there's all these little prompts that, that, could be, um, that we can say to ourselves, or you can, have, you can do it in a partner, you can do it with a team, you can do it with a coach. And our truth is right there. It's just waiting to come forward. And so it's really nice to be able to ask questions like, do I deserve to have the kind of you know, financial success that I want? And just see what comes up. You know, what would having a fit body feel like? And for me, it was terrifying because I had carried like extra 50, 60, 70 pounds my whole life. So I didn't know what that would feel like. And I was terrified of it. And I had to let release that and let her come out, the person who is fit and strong and, and, and likes to run around and ski and surf. And I figured out how to, I started skiing and surfing when I was after 50. <laughs> I just realized that. That's kind of funny, isn't that? Hi, I'm 50 and I'm going to try surfing. <laughs> and so why not? And that, that's what I, I, I embrace being in the company of you and so many like-minded people who say, this is my life. This is for me to experience. It ages. It, time is an illusion, and so is age. And if you haven't done it before, we've got to break that. In fact, when you're talking about that, um, earlier with the questions, whose voice are you hearing telling you 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 can't do this, or you shouldn't do this, or you should be this, or what? It's not yours. It was. It came to you from somewhere else. And once it's you can just always, cut yeah. that or turn that volume or just throw that <laughs> receiver away, then like that's what I that's what I'm feeling from you. And you know, just a total buzz that everything you desire is possible. And it might not always look exactly how it you know, you, you envision it, but in essence, it is. Well, it it, it reminds me so much of the movie divergent mm-hmm. when she looks at the glass and this is where I, I I don't know my kids were watching the movie and I went in and I started standing and I stood there for like two hours watching the whole movie with them and I couldn't get over how how much it reflects our our reality she puts her hand against the glass and she goes I'm stuck I'm drowning and then she goes this isn't real pushes the glass open everything falls down the glass breaks she can breathe she's fine because it was all in her it was all in her imagination and I, this isn't real, you know, that stop, that block, whatever those messages are, that isn't real. And that's, that kind of goes back to the beginning of our conversation. As within, so without. As, as, 
as our as your personal confidence grows, as your desire grows, as that feeling resonates on what you love to do and what you love to participate in, that's the real you. And in fact, one of the sessions that I'm going to be offering this uh, Monday coming up, a week from today, will be at Conscious Life Expo, and it's called Breakthrough to the Real You. And that's going to be a workshop, and we're going to spend a couple hours together, two and a half hours together at Conscious Life Expo. It starts at 2 o'clock, and we're going to talk about and work through real exercises that cut through that level of falseness. I say we all, you know, the layers that we have of this persona that we're supposed to be gets through to the real you, the real heart-centered you, the authenticity, the one that the person that you came here to be. And we're going to work on exercises, techniques, show you some of the, the most simple yet most effective ways to start living the real you and to break through all that. And so mm-hmm. um, it's really exciting. I'm super, I'm super excited to have it, um, to have this opportunity to, to work with anyone who can come to the expo or anybody who's even in the LA area and and it's it's absolutely amazing because um, when we offer these groups everyone comes in you know a little little concerned and you know a little um, self-conscious and by the end they're just they're floating they're just floating because they see the picture of who they really are we talk about you know doing a love it inventory where everybody gets to write down exactly what gets your light, turns that light on. It's kind of like I call it the love it buzz. And people start talking about, I love it when I, (laughs) someone actually said in our last session, I thought it was so great. She goes, I love my glass of wine before I go to bed. (laughs) I looked at her, I'm like, there you go. Absolutely. I mean, she just savors it and she collects and she just has a little bit and it's perfect and she kind of gets to have that wonderful experience, you know, kind of like, um, just really being a connoisseur and experimenting and, and that's for her that little those couple little sips is is just this magnificent experience and I'm like I can totally relate you love that you're into it you mean mm-hmm. you probably should look at opening a vineyard I mean you know so there's so many cool things and people start to shout out what they love to do and the vibration of the room gets so high and um well, someone said I love I love wearing comfy clothes and I thought that is so perfect who doesn't love being in their sweats or their jammies, you know? And so, mm-hmm. you know, and so it was just really nice to have these simple pleasures come forward and to have everybody really understand that it's the this, it's this simplicity, what you love to do, that makes life so rich and full. You know, it wasn't that, it wasn't that big house. It wasn't, it wasn't being, you know, across from the lake. It wasn't, it wasn't, well, the Prada bag was cute. I will admit it was cute, but, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it didn't, you know, well, that's at your, the end of the day, your, that's your pleasure. <laughs> yeah, that's my guilty pleasure. Yeah. I was going to say guilty, <laughs> but, and I didn't want to use that word. But, uh, but well, right. it was my little extravagant pleasure. But you know, it's it's not something I go for anymore. Really, I, I think I was a little bit, I was way too into the the whole like, let's well, be like the Kardashian thing. And then I I completely okay. have, I I just go with what I love now. You know, if it's something I love and I want to. I want to buy a nice uh, article for myself or a bag or shoes or whatever I will. But I'm, I'm so, I mean, I found such sim- um, joy in way different things. I mean, really for me, it's getting out and making sure even if it's 19 degrees, yesterday we went skiing and I said, I don't care. Um, you know, put the hot packs on. I have a heated scarf. I'm going to, I swear I'm going to make like a heated sweater for myself in the future. I had hot packs on my feet, hot packs on my hands. And we, and we got to see, we, at least we got outside and it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And so just remembering that the richness is really from within. Yes. And I, I I have to feel, um, the same way, uh, in this life, in this, uh, world that we live in we can get so sucked into the complexity of it the the massive noise uh that's how it comes to my way anyway and mm-hmm. how life like i'm i'm i I totally envision myself in your workshop when you, with all these people that you're with and feeling that vibration. And that is what you've slipped on the happy switch. That's what we want. You know, if I'm somewhere and it's just so much uh, negative energy, I, I, I've got to step into my, you know, beautiful bubble like Glenda the Good Witch and just 
fly away. <laughs> that's just not, uh, that's not, that's not for me. And, and I hear this often. And, uh, so the more, more people out there in the world that, that have these messages, uh, just as what Diane has experienced in her life and what she's doing now and continuing to do, you matter. Your voice matters and keep sharing that, you know, your story and, and, and because someone's going to relate to it. And that's what's so beautiful about, um, about books. I lo- that your book has been part of my course curriculum of my university of life. It seriously has. And Diane, I can't wait for your next book and uh, we'll have you on. So real quick, um, uh, so the Conscious Life Expo is this weekend that I believe starts on February 19th through the 22nd. And they could probably go online and see when you'll be speaking and then when you'll be conducting your workshop, is that correct? Yes. Um, I have a lecture on Friday, and that's a free one, and it's called uh, Live Your Best Life Ever, and that's mm-hmm. going to be from 7 to 8. And then I uh, have a workshop, and that will be um, the, that will be a, a paid workshop. It's two and a half hours, and that will be on Monday and from 2 to 4.30. And all of these are at the LAX, LAX Hilton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's convenient, you know, for many reasons um, by the airport, too. Um, And I know it'll be, I've heard great things about it. And if I can go, I will and finally get to meet you in person. That'll be energy. That'll be energizing enough just to meet you. But uh, I I thank you so much, Diane. I'm so just so humbled that that I you've come into my life that I've had the opportunity to have you on my show twice and I know we will be forever connected because I just you are you fuel me and that's what um that's what it's all about and that 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 your your frequency is what I love (laughs) when I was talking about the noise you're not that noise you are what I love to surround myself with but thank you for all your um your words of wisdom that you shared also with my listening audience. I know there are several takeaways and I'll be also putting the information down. Oh, and the, um, within the run sheet of, um, your show, there'll be, uh, some tips that you have shared, but also to encourage them to listen to you. Uh, how can my listeners connect with you if they want to, you know, attend one of your workshops or, or your book, uh, or just get to know you better. Well, the book is called The Real Brass Ring, and it's on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. And my website, um, now I am shifting. I, I'm going to have a brand new one up, hopefully within a week or so. Uh, but the current website is called LiveYourEverything.com, or it's going to be called Diane.net. That's my, that will be my new one, D-I-A-N-N-E. Dot net, and uh, we're going to be doing a big shift with more information, more tools, and um, trying to make it way more expansive. So, yeah, I have a whole new one underway. Yes, as you evolve, so do all our our uh, you know websites, and and uh, yeah, we, we want to share what we're um, how we're evolving to help others. That's how I look at it. Anyway, so I wish you a wonderful upcoming weekend here in Los Angeles. Uh, I think it's going to cool down a little bit, but as I said before, I don't think it's anywhere near 19 degrees. <laughs> Today's going to be a little ridiculous at about 95, so this is not fun in February because <laughs> we know we're going to get it uh, in the summer. But um, such a pleasure, and I wish you continued tremendous success in all that you do. You are a woman who's definitely in that place of knowing who she is and sharing with the world. And for that, I thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. And I really hope I have the chance. If, if it works out, I would love to just give you a big, huge hug this weekend. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And for you listeners out there, I hope you, um, when you listen to this, uh, I'm sure there will be tickets available. And just I'm guessing there website or google conscious life expo los angeles california um 
it's going to be four days worth of uh, lots of wonderful um, information for you to partake in and, and experience. That's what it is. It's going to be an experience. So, um, And also, of course, um, check out Diane's website. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to the next episode of the Nancy Ferrari Show where we always connect, evolve, and discover all that is possible. Make it your most glorious day. Thank you.